Welcome. Today we are going to see about sending DHT22 sensor data to the Firebase Cloud. Please watch the previous video on interfacing of DHT22 sensor with ESP32. I have explained the hardware configuration and the programming details for DHT22 sensor and I have provided the circuit diagram for interfacing with the hardware. Next I will tell you how we are going to create a Google Firebase account and how we are going to do the required settings in it and how we are going to send the ESP32 DHT22 sensor data into your created Google Firebase account. For that first uh, login into your Gmail account then go to Firebase console so this is the first link you have to click to enter into the Firebase console. After this one gets loaded, select go to console. So this is the Firebase console page. So first you are going to create a new project. So select this one. So this is the first page where you have to enter the project name. So I am going to send the temperature and humidity data into the cloud. So I am going to enter environment data. After entering, entering it, you see join Google development program. So we are not going to join in any program. After that, it is asking for AA assistance for your Firebase project. I don't need any AA assistant. Then Google Analytics, I am not going to do any analyticals on my data, so disable it and then select create project. Wait few seconds so that the project gets finished creating. So this is your project name and uh, here you can see the project has been created successfully. So uh, next we are going to move on to the authentication methods. So in case of Google, the data you are sending into the Google should be authenticated in some way so that the data you send recognizes or it should know where in which account it should be sent. So you need to authenticate the account and authenticate the data to do it. You click on this build account and then you can see authentication over here select this so in this authentication you select get started after uh, this uh, page has arrived there are several types of authentication so you can use your gmail account to authenticate your facebook account to authenticate or your github account to authenticate so in my case i am going to use the easiest method of authentication which is anonymous. Then to enable anonymous account, click this and then select save. So now the anonymous method of authentication is being enabled. Next we are going to create a real time database where our data which we sent is going to save here. So you click on build and in the build section you will be seeing real time database. Click this one. So we are going to create the database. So click on create database. Here uh, this is the region from which your data is going to arrive from. So there are three options. One is United States, Europe and Asia. So uh, if you are uh, from Asia and you are planning to use your data in MIT App Inventor then you don't select Asia. If you select Asia, then MIT AMP Inventor will not work. If you are planning to use your data to be shown in an Android app using MIT AMP Inventor, then do not select Asia as the option. So you should select United States as your option. In case you are just going to display or read the data in ESP32 microcontroller only, then you can select any of your any of these three options as per your city, as per your choice. But in only one case, 
if you are going to use the data to be used in MIT app inventor select United States don't select other options then click next so we are going to start our uh, mode in the test mode so you just select start in test mode and then click enable now the real-time database has been created this is the link of your real-time database where you have to use it in the further steps so uh, in our real-time database I am going to add two values that is nothing but temperature and humidity so temperature and humidity are the tags in which the values of the temperature and humidity is going to be saved over there so create the tag click plus button and here is the tag so you type temp for temperature and its value may be zero so the temperature value is a num numerical value so you select number and then click add similarly for uh, humidity data you type humidity and then the value should be zero and then click add uh, we need to know the API key of our real-time database to find your API key you need to go to the project settings so press this gear icon and then select project settings so your API key is shown over here this is your project API key which you should use in your VS code or the platform IO code to enable ESP32 to transfer the data to the Google Cloud. Now we have completed the Google Firebase setup process. Open VS code and then go to platform IO extension and then click open. In the platform IO extension I am going to create a new project and my project name is sending DHT22 sensor data to Firebase Cloud then select the board I am using ESP32 dev kit module this one then the framework I am using is Arduino and uh, I'm going to use the default location then click finish wait till your project is created now your project is created you can see here now open main.cpp so this is the main file you are going to edit I am ha actually having the code over here so I am going to copy and uh, paste it over here so we need to add some libraries over here so the first library we are going to add is the DHT sensor library to add this open the platform IO and then click open here go to the library manager and then paste DHT here you can see two libraries one is by Adafruit Unified Sensor and uh, DHT Sensor Library. So you are going to add this DHT Sensor Library. Click this one and then select Add Project. Select the project name that is the DHT Data to Firebase Cloud and then click Add. Now the library is added and it is now being configured okay now your DHT library is finished adding then you need to add the firebase ESP client library so to add this client library I will provide you a zip file so you just uh, download the zip file from the link given and extract it so this is the zip file just copy the zip file and go to VS code and then open your project and in your project select .pio and then go to library dependencies and then open this location to open this location 
right click on it and select reveal in file explorer so this is your location so paste the zip file over here after pasting it you extract all the contents of the zip file in this folder after extraction you can see the zip file is added in the library dependencies if this is done the process of adding the firebase esp client library is being completed so i am using esp32 so i am using wifi.h to access the esp32 wifi hardware if you are using esp8266 then uncomment this line and i comment this line so based the explanation of the code so these are the dht22 sensor configuration i am using dht22 and the pin number is 25 and these are the variables h and t used to save the humidity and temperature next this is the wifi configuration this is my uh, wifi name and this is the password so in case if you are using a hotspot provide the hotspot name and the hotspot password over here next we need the firebase configuration so we need the api key from the firebase so open the firebase so we need to know the api key of your project to find your api key go to settings and then select project settings so this is your web api key which is the api key copy this api key and then paste it over here next you need the database url again open the firebase and click real time database after the database is loaded copy this uh, database url link and then paste it over here so the api key and the database url are copied and pasted in the vs code next we are going to create three objects one is the firebase database object the second one is the authentication object and the third one is the configuration object which are being used by firebase then we are going to read the dht22 sensor so to do it i have created a new function void read dht22 here these two lines are explained in the previous code which i have posted earlier if you need any more explanation you go to the previous videos and check about it next we are moving to the setup function here i am going to use serial dot begin and uh, it is 115200 baud rate and then i am beginning the dht sensor after that i am selecting the wifi mode as stationary after that i am turning on the wifi and connecting to the wifi which is provided with fi ssid and the wifi password provided above next uh, these lines are used to print the connecting status of the wifi if the connecting is going on then this line is used to print dots every 100 milliseconds after this connection is completed which is checked by this wifi status not equal to wl connected if this is connected then the while loop gets exit and then move towards wifi connected and the ip address is printed using this line next i am going to config the api key and i am going to config the database url which is provided above then i am going to make an authentication with the provided api key and the database url to do this i am using this if condition here i am provided the configuration of the api key and the authentication of the url then if this 
get success then it will print sign up is ok if it has failed then it will print sign up failed so if the failure message occurs you have to recheck with your api key and your database url next i am going to start the firebase account firebase server to run again and again then i am using reconnect wi-fi equal to true which represent if a disconnection in wi-fi is detected then my esp32 hardware will try to connect back to the wi-fi again by its own and the last step is a void loop here i am going to read the dht22 sensor and get the value of the room temperature and humidity and save it in h and t variable after that i am going to send this h and t variable the value of h and t variable to the firebase to do it t represents the temperature value of your room so this backslash temp field represents the temperature in the firebase database so you put backslash temp and then put t over here and the next step is to send the humidity we are going to use backslash hqme which is the humidity field represented in the firebase database and then send h over here after that i am going to wait for 5 seconds and send the data back to the firebase so this is the complete explanation of the code now let us compile the code by pressing this build button if you are compiling for the first time the compile will be slow so you need to wait patiently while our code is uh, getting compiled i am going to connect my esp32 with the laptop using the micro usb cable now the compilation has completed with the success message now we can upload the code into the esp32 so we can upload it by pressing this upload button Now the upload is completed with the success message. Now you can see the humidity and the temperature data started to receive in the Firebase terminal after the completion of the upload. Thank you for watching the video.